Hello, everyone. So I have the pleasure of having with me uh, Angelo Gionis. Uh, I said that right, right? Angelo Gionis yep, yep. Uh, from Contour Mortgage. Uh, Angelo's been in the business for 25 years. So he's been able to see different uh, sides of the market. And right now he has a, a team of 15 loan officers. So he's a lead uh, loan officer, or I guess the, the manager of the crew. Uh, and Mangel actually does a lot of um, educational seminars and a lot of events for for realtors. Um, and, and one of the things on, on top of what he does, which is all types of loans, um, you could conventional, Sony May, FHA, uh, rehab loans. One of the things that uh, he came up with in, in a recent event were three things that are very unique to um, and kind of like piqued my interest, which is one we're going to cover is what is a SEMA purchase. Uh, an assumable mortgage and and um, basically seller finance costs because this in this environment that we're in we have to get a little bit creative and I we actually appreciate um, Angelo speaking about that so how are you doing Angelo yeah I'm doing great great how okay good 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 so so talk a little bit about uh, a SEMA purchase so that people can yeah understand. so so a little bit about the different strategies like we said uh, rates were in the two and threes and fours now we're around eight. So we're thinking of strategies on how to help the consumer uh, have the lowest payment possible and have the lowest closing costs possible. So one of the things we've been discussing is what's called a SEMA purchase. What that means is, let's just say I had a listing in New York and I purchased a home two years ago for 600,000. My loan balance was 500,000 in Queens. Now I'm selling the house through you and you're listing the property for 700,000. We could reach out to the lender that I currently have, see if they'll allow a SEMA purchase, which most of them do. And there's a small fee, let's just say about $1,000 for that fee. But as a purchaser, I could buy that loan or assume that loan, and I don't have to pay the mortgage tax. And in New York, and especially in the boroughs, that would be around a $10,000 savings less cost. So the cost on that transaction might be $1,000 to acquire the loan, $500 to record the loan. But really, at the end of the day, it would save the client about $8,500 in closing costs. Now, with the SEMA purchase, do you keep the same interest rate? That um, You that don't. You don't. You just acquire the loan. And if I would buy that property for $700,000 and my loan amount was $600,000, I would have to pay the mortgage tax on the difference from five hundred dollars to six hundred, dollars but I would save on that whole $500,000. And in the boroughs right now, that's almost $10,000. Now, when you mean acquiring... What does that mean exactly? Does that mean that we take out a new loan with you and you just pay off that that loan? No, ba basically what it means is I'm actually acquiring the note, the paperwork and all that stuff so the title company doesn't have to record it again and it saves you on the transfer tax or the mortgage tax, the New York State mortgage tax. So there's a little bit of work. We got to reach out to the lender. We got to acquire the paperwork. Uh, we got to do all that good stuff. But if we get it done in the beginning, it may only add about 15 to 20 days to the transaction. But if you're if you're acquiring the note and you're saying that you don't keep the same interest rate, though, right? Does no, you don't. You just acquire the fact that you don't have to pay the mortgage tax. OK, but the but the note will change, which is basically yeah, the, no, the note will change based on, you know, based on whatever mortgage you currently get. But okay. you actually basically saying, I acquired that loan. I have 500000 in our name. Now I don't have to pay the mortgage tax. So it's almost like you own that loan right there. Okay. All right. So explain what an assumable mortgage is. Yeah. So, so this is an exciting one, you know, an assumable mortgage. You know, rates are as low as about 2% three years ago. So there's a lot of people out there selling their properties today that have interest rates well below what the current levels are, whether they're 2%, 3%, 4%. Now, let me preference, the only loans that you can assume are three specific types. It's FHA, it's VA, and it's USDA. A lot of clients ask, well, I have a conventional loan. Is there any way I could assume that mortgage? There's two instances where you could assume a conventional loan. Number one is in a divorce situation between a husband and a wife where one of the parties are assuming that mortgage. You could assume it. And if there's a death in the family and one of the heirs are acquiring the mortgage, you could assume it that way. So let me explain exactly what it is. I buy the property three years ago for 500000 again. My rate's 4%. The current market is 8%. And you're selling that home for 700000 We reach out to the lender to make sure it's assumable. They say yes. 
So you could market that property with an assumable mortgage at 500,000. The only negative is if we're selling it for 700, you have to make up whatever the spread or difference is. In this scenario, it would be 200,000 and closing cost. But now you get the opportunity to acquire the loan at a $500,000 amount at a lower rate, three, four, 5%. So it would save the client so much money on the payments. And here's the other part. It's a little technical, but I have to explain it. When you take out a 30-year mortgage, the first seven years of that mortgage is primarily interest. The last seven years is primarily principal. Now, when you assume this mortgage, you assume the note, the rate, the payment, and the terms. So let's just say we were in that loan for five years. I'm starting on a 25-year payment schedule. That's number one. And every payment I make, more is going towards the principal. So if that's something that can be done in a timely manner, it's something that we should be looking at because it could save the client a lot of money. Now, the benefit to the seller, and this is important, let's just say there was two houses on the block similar in style, similar in square footage, all that good stuff. If one had an assumable mortgage option, how much more favorable would people look at that as opposed to the other one? So it could be a huge selling feature as well. Okay. And what, are there any drawbacks to, to this? Yeah. Things? I mean, there are a couple of drawbacks. Number one is time. You know, in this marketplace, we want to close loans quick. To assume a, lo a loan, we have to reach out to the direct lender it's with and see what their timeline is. So it is going to add a little bit of time to the transaction. But if we could save that client a little bit more in the closing cost, you know, the seller has an opportunity to get a little bit more in the price of the home as well. So it's a win-win it's a situation for both. How much time does it usually take? Well, I would say it would probably take an additional 30 days oh, to 30 days. That's, that's do the bad. transaction. Yeah. Not bad at all. I mean, that's kind of like a premium. I mean, if the seller really wanted to, if they had like 10 years into the mortgage at a three and a half or 4%, I mean, they can actually do something with that. And I'm not charge a premium, but what I'm saying is that that's a golden ticket right there. If you, yeah. if you have the spread, like for the down payment, right. To make yeah, it's it's definitely a golden ticket. And one yeah. of the things I'm reaching out to all my realtor partners about is when you're taking that listing, ask yeah. these three specific questions. What type of loan do you have? What's your balance? And what's your rate? And who's it with? That's number four. Once we find out those items, if it checks all the boxes, we could then research the assumable. We could then research the lender it's with and the time feature. And then when you position that house to sell, we could advise the buyers that there is a creative option. This is what it is. And it's it's a way to definitely help the purchaser and the seller, you know. Uh, in well, the seller situation. make more money because- Exactly. At the, the end of the day, I mean, um, th there's no appraisal or anything involved, right? Is there- No, no, there's no appraisal. It's the same thing. So, How do you qualify? You know, it's the same same way and all that good stuff. So even if if I have the cash, I'll pay twenty forty thousand dollars more for for a mortgage that's that's assumable and it's at three or four percent. Of course, because your payment would be almost yeah. half in terms of where exactly. it is right now, and over the life of the loan, it's huge. The only thing is, you still right. have to qualify. You still have to qualify full income. You still have to qualify with your pay stubs and your credit store and all that good stuff. But it's just like any other type of loan, and you would go directly to that lender. Okay, so you go directly to that lender. So basically, yeah. if there's a more, if I'm a buyer and I say, okay, there's an assumable mortgage, uh, I would have to reach out to that to that lender and say, okay, here's all my information. Okay, yep. I just want to make sure that I qualify. Yeah, and, and the cool thing about what we do here is I'm here to educate the community, whether it benefits our company or myself. That's right. secondary. Any option to help any of our partners, and more importantly, the client in a situation, we want to get that information out to them. Because in that case, you wouldn't even get the mortgage. It's no, I wouldn't get the mortgage, but yeah, you but want to know what? I'd look like a hero for everybody. The value that's add. Looking to do. Yeah, so thank it's you. It's really not about that one transaction. You know? Yeah, man. So what about seller financing costs? Yeah, so, so this is a creative option. You know, when the rates spiked up back in November of last year, Everybody was talking about the three, two, one buy downs where, hey, the seller could put some money towards the uh, buyer's interest rate. So that's still an option today. So with the higher rates, you could always add a seller's concession onto the loan where the seller could give credit for a closing cost 
or B, you know, rate buy down. So that's very, very important to talk about. And some people don't know this. If you're putting down more than 25%, the seller financing could be up to 9%. So you could actually add 9% to help on the closing costs and to help on the rate buy down. If it's under 25% of a down payment, it's the standard 6%. And uh, on investment properties, it's always 2%. Is that 6% for FHA and conventional? Or? Yeah, it's FHA conventional. And if you're putting down lower than 3%, it's only 3% of the concession. You know, FHA, if you're putting three and a half, you could still get that 6% concession. 6%. But, you know, it has to appraise and everything. So as long as it appraises. It has to appraise on top. Everybody has to be on the same page in regards to that. But it's a great way. And a statistic a lot of people don't know is if we had 100 people purchase a house today, mm -hmm. Do you know most of them are out of the loan in seven years? And the reason why I say that, about 93% of them either sell their home or refinance. So when we work, when we look at a 30-year mortgage, most people talk about 30 years. When I sit down with the clients, I'm really only talking 10 years. What's the rate? What's the savings? And the best part about it is if they're only going to be in the loan for seven years, we could talk different options on doing the buy downs and all that other stuff. Raphael, I want to throw you for a little bit of a loop. Okay. Some of my clients are actually asking for a lender credit and a higher rate, if you could believe that. In certain situations, let's just say the rate's 8%. But if I offered that client 9%, that sounds almost ridiculous. Why would you offer a client 9%? Because we could give them a lender credit of, let's just say, 2 to 3% on their closing cost. Okay. If the client's not going to be in the home for longer than two, three years, even though that payment may be, let's just say, $100 more a month, the reality is if that concession of the cost saves the closing cost, you know, it, it may save the borrower some money. So what we say is every situation is unique, depending on how long they're going to be in the property, what they're looking to do. So we look and explore every different option, whether it's seller financing, lender credit, rate buy down, you know, we're here just to educate. And like we said before, the most important thing I can do for my client and for your clients you refer us is that first initial consultation. Okay. Spend 45 minutes with them. Talk about their needs, their wants, and really at the end of the day, explore everything so they're fully educated. And the most important thing is not the rate, it's the payment. If they're comfortable with the payment, then the program and rate, everything falls into the mix. And that's really at the end of the day, the most important thing. What's my payment? Can I afford it? That that was really good information um, because it it gives it gives people in the field like myself tools to go out there and and speak to people about and and uh, because in this in this environment you have to you have to get creative yeah that's the bottom line so um, so Angelo um, thank you so much for the information now if somebody wanted to reach out to you what is the best way of doing that yeah, because I, I, I always tell my best way is my cell phone number it's a five one six nine zero two three nine three three consultations, questions. There's no dumb question. There's no question that's embarrassing. We're here to sit down and answer any question that any client has, and we're always available. So if you have a question or if you have a concern, reach out to us. We could explore all different options. You could help them on finding the property. I could talk to them about strategies on acquiring the property. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. All right, Angela, thank you so much. Well, I'll see you back on the field, okay? All right, have a great day. Okay.